Why, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. I'm your hosting guide, Zolan Iron Shield. And today, I'm going to give you a quick little review of my season here and how things are going and a couple ideas and my thoughts. So this is my first season where I completely went through 2.0, okay, the new version. Um, I actually have a lot of positivity to say about it, and of course there are some negative things which people always like to point out to me in the po in the comments, which I totally understand, and I feel you, because there's a few things uh, myself as well. But overall, I had a really fun season, and I really like the formation system. Now, let me be very careful on how I premise that, because there are some things in the formation system that I don't like, okay? There's a little bit of randomness, which again, randomness is good, but causes some problems. So let me just give you a quick little showdown of my thing. I'm using my headset today for this because it was late at night. I wanted to review the season before the season closes and I was like, I'm not gonna set up everything. So hopefully it sounds good, will be great. Um, I did the camera though, cause I know you guys like the camera on. So let's go ahead and quick show you here real quick. And uh, this is our season. So we're red, all right, uh, our allies are orange. <laughs> It was quite a destruction. We uh, had a very awesome, wonderful opponent, though, who fought us very hard the entire season, which is why at the end there, we actually purposely did not take the rest of their land, and now we're just doing PvP. We didn't take their capital, because who does that? Who takes capitals? You heard me in the, in the <laughs> when you don't need it. Um, I've got some old stories about that from many seasons ago where we had, I think you remember. I, I talked about it. But, um, and then we basically, uh, this realm of Southern Gondor, decided to kind of just chill with us. We're doing a little PvP with them, but besides that. So here's what we did. Um, again, so these are actually uh, some of our friends from the orange team who joined up on the top. And re remember in Kingdoms game mode, this is the Kingdoms game mode, they uh, don't, if they're not linked, you don't get the colors. So technically this is their land, but since it's not linked to their orange land, it's not orange. I don't know. I kind of understand why they do that, but at the same time, I kind of wish it would be orange so you can see all the colors. Some of them we just didn't finish taking because we don't really need to, even though we have a lot of the tiles. Um, it's pretty fun. Um, it was a great season. Uh, I got Depth Defenders. They're super good in 2.0, okay? Again, I'm just gonna run through some things here as, as I talk, as I remember things. Um, it was a really, really fun season. You can see we were battling all throughout Eriador, which I don't really battle through Eriador very much in many of my previous seasons, so this was really fun for me. I was like, this is really cool. Um, so we traveled up here. You can see we're all right here. I'm way up at the very closest spot possible right here. I claim this spot from someone else. Um, but yeah, it was pretty darn fun, and uh, it's a really good season. Let me give you a quick little uh, review cap on where I'm at with uh, score, um, pretty fun. I actually, uh, so I placed at 48 on the server. So we're talking several thousand people. I, I was 48 strongest, so that's kind of cool. It's when you hit level 150 with your ring, mind you. So pretty good, because sometimes, you know, I could hit 150 a week later and there could have been another 200 people who got it for me. So that was kind of a cool thing to get. And then my personal production right now is 34 out of the entire server. It was 19 a few days ago, but now people have just been farming big tiles for the last week because the main battling's over. So um, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, and our this is our fellowship. We're at 2.3 million. Our ally fellowship, 1.2.1. Uh, another Our other fellowship, 1.8. And then our other allies, 1.5. And then these are our two opponents, five and six, who were very strong and they're still strong. As you can see, they're still five and six. Uh, very honorable opponents so, from what I saw. One or two people who are a little bit maybe complainy, but I never judge an entire group on one or two people because uh, the rest of them were awesome. They're really nice people and we had really fun playing with them. And again, this is the Southern Kingdom, which really we didn't fight with very much. So um, I guess they just decided they're like, mm, we'd rather just have our little country and <laughs> get some points. So I guess that's what happened. I was not in charge of diplomacy. I have no idea. So um, I cannot speak for that. But my leaders, by the way, did a fantastic job. They always do. Uh, quick little brag out to my leaders. Um, I've really been enjoying being in this group. Uh, right now it's uh, it's Loom, right, is our thing. Our boost level, we actually, I don't know if we're gonna make it, probably not, but we almost finished a level 50 abundant resources, which is crazy, because a lot of people were just kind of chilling, not playing very much the last few weeks, because there wasn't really need to. We were, we got all the points. All right, uh, so pretty much, pretty darn fun. Um, a big update that I really liked about um, 14 too. 
um, is I like that they they updated something that was bothering me with the 2.0 version was the market levels. Okay, what I mean by that is before it was really hard to get up to these points of conversion, right, where it converts your bartering from a 50/50 to better, right, um, right here. I mean, from a, like a one to 50 ratio. Now it's much higher. Um, they made it much easier to get. Also. You had to get this by adding the bars you earned, right? Which, by the way, just a little tip, never add bars like this. If you're going to use bars to level it up, buy something because it gives you the exact same number. Okay, just throwing that out there for everybody. I already looked at the math, exactly the same. Um, but also, if you just use in-game resources, look. Look at the level up there, ready? It goes up. So I really like that. So, and again, these are gonna go away after the end of the season, but I can use all my massive amounts of extra in-game resources every day, and it slowly levels it up. Anyway, I got up to 24. Now, some of it I got up with using some of my bars, but I had extra blue and green items, so I used some of them this season, okay? And I, I, you can get some cool things, like you can get permanent things, like basic respect, blue respect, right? These are the things if you're gonna use them on anything, use them on that, because those are permanent for your characters, right? Those won't go away at the end of the season. If they have the little blue thing on them, the top right there that has a little thing and set, that means season, it'll go away with the end of the season. So remember, don't collect those thinking you're gonna have those for the next season, okay? You gotta make sure. So you can always check in your items, right? For anybody watching, right? Go into your item box. You can see which one of these are gonna stay. These ones are gonna stay. They don't have little things, but um, these other ones, I might as well use them up as soon as I can in the next 15 hours because all of these are gonna go away, right? I was collecting these. Um, and then you have the kingdom, the store, still pretty cool. I like how the store works. Very easy to keep up with getting merit now with the new merit system. Now that wasn't 2.0, but still very nice. I like that. Um, so that's, those are two little things there. Um, I also thought that, um, here's my target, what I'm going to hit right now. Just again, since I'm just showing you how the season went. Um, again, this is my season 13. Let me just double check. Yes, 13, because I'm going into my 14th season. I started right when the game came out, and I have not taken a break any season. So technically, I am as far as anyone could be in a season, in seasons. And how many seasons you play on an account? Oh, that'll be fun. Now, there's a few things with experience I want to talk about in a moment that I think in 14 isn't that great. I mean, not 14, in 2.0, uh, which is the new updated version of the game. Um, I do think, by the way, personally, that they did a little too many updates at once. I like a lot of them, but some of them were, um, too extreme. They were too extreme. They were, um, it was too much all at once. And I, I, I kind of warned that. I kind of was saying that when it was happening. I was like, I hope they don't add too much change at once because it's going to jar people and it's going to be hard for people who liked a certain feel of the game. The game is still same, play the same way overall macro with, with players, but, um, the way you read things and stuff. They did do some nice updates, though, with the reading of battle per reports. So let's get through that. So anyway, sweet. I'm going to get the best title, King of Men, shiny gold, wonderful. You can see I got my ring powered, this one, that. Uh, teamwork, I'm up at our top. I'm in our top 100 of the leaderboard. I'm 64, actually, for fighting and contributing with all the different things. Um, technically, here, I can show you what it actually says here if I click uh click this one off for a second oh i can't control that one nah never mind um <laughs> so anyway there, there it is right there uh you can see some of our crazy monsters up here but um i'm i'm actually you know in the average normal down here with everybody else uh but yeah it's pretty cool pretty cool mind you they're awesome if one up at the top but just saying it's very impressive uh so there's the teamwork we have the control it says uh have occupied a certain amount at a certain time. I believe we're gonna probably, I have obtained eight, how, how many have we obtained? Six, so I believe we're just gonna get 700 of the points here, this one, the regular title is 700. It's very hard to get this top one, and also, it's not really very like, uh, I feel like that one's a little rough, and I think I talked about this in the past, because sometimes some of these designated structures, you'll have to literally make other people not be able to get their capital and stuff, which is kind of like, oof right as you can see here uh the, the structures are the rings right the gray haven stuff we're not gonna take the gray havens because we want them to be able to get some points that kind of thing right and again we're allied with orange 
And we don't want to take our allies a couple ones, right? The other kingdom. Um, so these are a little hard to get, and I don't really necessarily like these ever. This isn't a 2.0 thing. This is a um, anytime with this game mode on the last like many seasons. I don't like these two because I know they're like, oh, well, you have the, if you own the whole map, we'll give you all the additional rewards. It's like, uh, take these two away, do something else. Um, I don't think the goal should be to just wipe the map. Um, I think it causes um, frustration for other players who work really hard. Maybe they work really hard to defend their one little spot. And then this big, ma massive team just wipes them over because, you know, they won an extra 100 points. They should do it in a way that encourages it, where you want to take as much as possible, but that, like what our team did this season, because our team is cool, we decided to not take the last capital. You know, have some encouragement system there. Maybe have the enemy team have a surrender system, where when they surrender, it's no skin off their teeth except they get to keep their capital, and then the other team gets a little bonus. They get a little extra 50 points or something because the enemy team surrendered at the end, right? In the last, like, few weeks. There's, like, a time when that can happen. That'd be a cool little addition to the game. Just a thought. What do you guys think? Um, you can see I did all these ones also. Doing pretty good overall with that. Um, very happy with that. Now, let's just quickly run over what I wanted to talk about. Run over. Not with a car. But uh, we're just going to run over. Here's some PvP stuff of uh, the reading the reports and stuff, okay? So you can see here, I love this now. By the way, I did get Bard. Um, pretty cool. Um, I put some stuff in and got him right okay i don't want to give you spoilers so i have a video an opening video a really big one that i set up i have not released yet might already be on the channel released before this is out so i don't say that yet go check this on it should be on the same playlist as this the legacy playlist um check it out if you want to go see a fun opening because it was pretty fun um some cool stuff happened uh so anyway uh bard is pretty good now i only have bard respect I have some very generic, decent items on him right now, but I gave him Gimli's good items to see how he did. Pretty good, he did like 70,000 damage without his R5 yet. Because obviously I don't have him R5, I don't have that much to put in the game. I have him halfway to respect too, okay? Now, here's a big one, all right? Here's a big one of the new 2.0. I do not like the fact that if you have Commander Respect 0, they cannot get over level 30. That is terrible, okay? That's gotta change. So that's one, that's a big one for me. Um, I'm gonna say a few negative ones here and I'm gonna say a few positive things. Um, and then if they're respect one, they can get up to level 40, and respect two, they can get up to level 50. I don't really like that person, I think that's not good. When it comes to the PvP, I like how formations work. I love PvP combat, okay? I really, really do, let's see. I think I might have a report here I sent that was cool to my friend Jethro, so that was pretty fun. Um, like, this is a pretty good one. I mean, look at my Gimli's damage in this one. Um, but, uh, we didn't even have full armies for this fight. So, I love this, how this works now. I love how everything works with this. It's super cool. One thing that is hard for me 2.0, but I understand why, is that a lot of times the commanders are super strong. They do, like, 25% of the damage they used to do. And that makes sense with a little bit of overlap, depending on what commander does what. Support commander, that kind of thing. Um, it makes sense because you have four commanders now in a group. They shouldn't be doing 100%. They should be doing about 25 to 30 to 40% depending on how much they make damage compared to another commander. But um, I definitely think I'd like to see it if you could keep commanders, you know, your own commander doing a lot more damage than others. So really Gimli and Dane are both super powerful commanders still. Um, I mean, look, this my Dane even died with low troops and still did 70,000 damage. Very good. Now, I found a really good combo is this combo right here that I have. Is uh, uh, Gandalf is a great sustain and support commander. You just give White Rider, right? Gives 25%. Uh, White Council, boom, awesome. Defenses, damage output for your team. And then I've been put Falcon. He helps defend and buff up all of the dwarves, right? And giving them depth defenders is amazing because he can buff three groups of depth defenders. Depth defenders are really, really strong, mind you. I'm very impressed with them this season. Um, in 2.0. And of course, the uh, Shire Protectors are still pretty good because they help your commander deal more damage. Just in the fact that they don't necessarily buff them. But I'm trying to figure this out if anyone leaves in the comment. They definitely seem to do, your commander seems to do more damage with Shire Protectors. And I don't know if it's because they're not being attacked 
So it lets your commander have a lot more time to do damage. And I've been like looking through the reports trying to figure it out. Me and my friend Jethros, which you all know. Um, so I'm not quite sure mathematically with that. It seems like they're almost buffing the commanders, but their ability doesn't say it buffs the commanders. So a little bit weird on that one. Um, so yeah. Oh, and there's some cool things. I actually got a might berserkers thing, which I'm going to switch out. I'll have a video showing you how to switch that with the new 2.0 system. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that'll be on the guide playlist here, huh? Pretty cool overall. I like this team. I've been having a lot of fun with it. My other team I've really been having a lot of fun with um, is my, um, let's see. Where did I, my horse team. Okay, now this is something that I, uh, here we go. Well, hold on one second here. Where did I put it? For some reason, my emulator here is having a very hard time. There it is. Um, here's my horse team. I was a little bit disappointed. I attacked the mummy kill camp, and they didn't have mummy kills in the in the level 50 tile camp. They were just regular other characters. That was kind of weird to me. That should probably be changed back. I liked fighting all mummy kills because I could see how much damage I could deal in the previous version of the game. So that was a little weird. A little side note there. Um, I love this team though. Okay, this team. By the way, me and my friend Jethros, we found this. We figured this team out way before everybody else figured it out like four or five days before with the first with 2.0 just came out not this season but the middle of the last season for us um i was already using this team and then like three days later everybody was using emra hill and using theoden aomer and Deneth or and they use the things that synergize or ally synergize right they both have ally and then we have De uh theoden has uh arid leader or sorry uh, where is it there it is and so does the other one. It's kind of funny to me that they turn them into swords. They change the icon for Theoden and Aomer to be the same icon as Ally. And I don't know if that was something to kind of say, hey, Synergy, look, that was weird. They did that half through the season. I don't know if you guys know it caught that. I caught that. Um, so, because before it was like these three little Healy things looking like pluses on the icon. I'm not sure why. But again, really, really powerful team. Great for taking tiles. Pretty decent in PvP, not at the same level as my damage dealing group or my friend Jethro's army damage dealing group, where his uh, his Elrond and stuff will just blow people away with like 110,000 damage. Kind of like where my Gimli will do 110 to 120,000 too. Um, pretty fun though. Pretty, uh, I like that. Now another thing that's really cool is that when you go into reports, they add these little tabs. For the different waves thank goodness that that was really needed right very nice addition to the game um i definitely one thing i liked before i liked how the little health things had the little chunk bars like indented and i know i told you they took that away after just the first week or two i understand why they did it didn't really make sense they were just kind of there for looks but it reminded me of the battle for middle earth uh war of the ring like risk board game mode where like if you auto resolve they go ching 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 i don't know if you remember that you guys all remember that game that pc game anyway but again i still like how that looks and how that works as a compliment with the 2.0 um so there's definitely some good stuff here's another a negative unfortunately is healing healing is so bad now that horse team is amazing their healing is insane they will consistently do a 50,000 healing with imra hill and denethor and them it's amazing combo how it works everyone else like are so disappointing they're healing arwen is just her healing is awful and my friend used to use arwen all the time they're jethros galadriel's healing is awful i mean he said he was so disappointed frodo and sam mind you are way better now okay they are fantastic defense commanders they're insane now um in fact i've been using frodo and sam in this one group here uh with some with just other dwarves and kind of stuff and they're they're amazing they're they're really really good um, and then you can see I tried this other team. Boromir is also really good right now. Gandalf the Grey is still good. Um, that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, I have a complaint with Ori a little bit. But um, Ori right now has a little bit of a... He doesn't really know what to do as a character. Okay? Um, they kept him with Durin's Blood, which is like... Okay. Durin's Blood is a very powerful ability. So, cool. He could just do flat bunch of damage. But the way they made him, he used to be really good at leading axe throwers with his special item he still is okay he still is it still will help your dwarven these ones i don't know why it shows it's just range so it only works for the axe thrower training grounds um for dwarves but so that's still good but the problem is he's got this cleric ability which is also super cool gives him units attack he buffs one of the command of focus in himself it's pretty strong 
Um, but the thing is, Musician no longer scales with any focus. It used to scale with focus. One, one of the abilities, remember there were two trees out of here? One of the abilities scaled with focus, and it worked really, really good. And with him, because he could heal his troops, he could buff the axe throwers, and then not just that, he could give them fire defense with Dwarven Lonely Mount. I mean, Dwarven Warrior. Oh, wait. No, we can't do that anymore. But it is a really good ability, all right, the Dwarven Warrior. But I have one complaint, okay? 40 defense is insane, right? And it modified by the defense stat, and it lasts for six rounds. I mean, it's really strong for his group. It could be anything. But of course, you're gonna have ax throwers on them. So they can't be like guardians or anything else, iron warriors, because you want ax throwers on him, right? Because he only buffs his own ax throwers with his ability, his formation, right? So now, yeah, great, those ax throwers have plus 40 defense. I think it would have been better, it would have made more sense to make this ability be a little less. I mean, maybe not 40, maybe 20 at max, right? And then work on three formations. Why do I say that? Well, let's go over to Balin, his counterpart, who was always similar, but maybe a little bit stronger because he was a slightly higher command level commander, even though technically it doesn't matter now because you can, like, you know, make mighty blue commanders become purple and vice versa, right? But his says attack and defense, both of three allied formations, up seven. Okay? So, yeah, it's not 40, but it's seven, so let's just say 14 in general, right, on three formations. So why don't they make Ori do 10 defense on three formations? It still would be less as good as Bolin's because Bolin's is doing seven attack and defense. And Bolin, in addition, is reducing fire damage and focus damage. You see how much better that is? Um, and it also, again, it wouldn't matter if it was that much of a difference. That's not the issue. The issue for me personally with that character is that it doesn't synergize with what you'd want to use him for. Right? Now, again, what you could use for him is you could put damage items in Mori and put Durin's blood. But why would you do that when there's other commanders that would use that so much better? There's other dwarf commanders, Thorin and, you know, Gimli and Dane and the other ones have Durin's blood, even uh, Falgan and Dwalin. They will do more damage than Ori, right? Because their just base stats are higher. His is more of a focus based commander. So he's like a jack of all trades that doesn't really do anything super great, but he's not. He's not bad, but when you compare him to all the new commanders, he isn't really very high tier. I'd put him way down there in like a B tier. I wouldn't really say he's like total garbage. There's a couple characters that are just total garbage now, and I feel bad, bad for those people who use those characters. But I would not use Ori over any of my other dwarves for most things. Now, he'd still be good to be put in a dwarf group to have those axe horrors when I get his special weapon. But I'm not going to get his special weapon right now, because I just don't want to commit to that, right, yet? So... And still, have to, I'd have to upgrade a little bit. So there's there's a world where he could be very strong to make him his units very tanky, and that he did lots of extra damage with axe throwers. Still there, but I feel like they should have changed this one to be a little different. Made him not have Durn's blood, or Durn's blood, but did something different, some kind of focus damage or heal. Um, but again, healing so better, and I don't know if I want that anyway. And musician, I really think they need to bring back the fact that musician scales off focus or something for dwarves, especially because it would make cleric make a lot more sense. I'm not really upset about cleric. I think cleric's ability makes sense. It just doesn't synergize with anything else really hardcore. There's things that will work. I'm not saying they won't. It just doesn't synergize hardcore, if you get my point. Um, same thing back to healing, now that I went off that little rant on Ori. Um... I tried out this guy just to see how good his healing is. His healing looks like it should be amazing. First three rounds restores 200 HP to units and three allied formations, right? And then he even has the plus 5% with these items just to try it out. His healing was horrible. Like he did like a total in a, in a full battle of like 6,000 healing where my horse army is doing like 50, 60,000 with Denethor and Imrahil who are not focus based healers, okay? Um, this is the same case Jethros has found with Arwen and Galadriel, which by the way, Galadriel is still a decent commander and still strong, but they changed her to be more of a healer in 2.0, okay? And I don't know, where, I thought I had a Galadriel. Where's my Galadriel? Oh, there she is. Um, they changed her to be more of a healer. This is a healing ability now, and her ult is also a healing ability with a removal, right? Her first two are still damage dealing, so she can still do that. But my friend said he tried these and they just didn't heal very much. So, I think healing needs to be buffed somehow. Um, I don't think it needs to be out of this world, 
But I think if you focus on a build, healing build with that plus 5% and you have Arwen and Galadria in the group and stuff, your guys should be healing for at least as much as that horse army with Immerhill and Denethor. 50,000 kind of thing. So something's going on there with the numbers that they probably should look into. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they'll still focus on things like that. Um, but overall, that's how things are going um, with the season. That's some of my thoughts on the new season stuff. Uh, I might throw out another little video on a couple things like the formation I like and stuff like that. Um, but overall, that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys today. You guys have a great and wonderful day in Middle Earth, my friends. Thanks for listening to this little 25 minute spiel of Rise to War info on my season 13. How it went overall season 13 was actually quite fun. Um, I will say I also really like the rework of the Kings of Men game mode. I love that there's borders and that these big crossings. I think I talked about in the previous video. It's very well done on this map. I really like it. We're going to be doing Rebuilding Glory next the 14, so we'll see how I like that. Um, but uh, yes, overall my impressions are there are a lot of stuff I really like about 14. I, formation system overall. I like it. I think it's actually good. Do I miss regular thing with one commander being super duper strong? Yeah, I do because it did feel different and I kind of I kind of wish they could have incorporated more skill trees in each commander and made them feel a little bit more impactful. Like maybe didn't crunch everyone's numbers down to 20 35 percent and just bigger numbers across the board for the formation. I think that would have made some people feel better, but I understand mathematically you don't want the computer to freak out. Right. So uh, but overall, I do like the formation system, but I feel like it did make some things a lot weaker, like healing. Um, units are pretty, seem pretty balanced though, if you get certain things. It definitely balanced some commanders that have been overpowered for way too long, like Sudan. Now Sudan doesn't seem very good at all though, which I feel bad for those people. I, for some reason she just, the way it just doesn't seem like I've seen anyone that she's very strong with. But she used to be, let's be honest, she was broken for like three, like six seasons and everybody do it like there I, I there are a few people there's a few people that denied it but they denied it because they didn't want her to get nerfed right um but she was overpowered like she was in my opinion she was the top three strongest commanders in the game suited so uh she's not anymore and i feel bad for those people because she she didn't been nerfed that much so there's a lot of stuff with two point my i'm using that as an example because 2.0 did this with the metas right and and that's sometimes good for a game and sometimes it can hurt a game an earthquake sometimes can be good, you know, if it if it helps shake people up and get people awake, you know, for a game. But otherwise, it can be bad if it destroys something that people liked. Um, so again, there are good things or bad things. I've had many comments where some people are like, oh, I like this. And other people are like, oh, I, you know, 2.0, blah, blah, blah. If you're going to tell me something you really didn't like about 2.0, I would love to hear your specific reason why, not just that you hate it, okay? Because um, it doesn't help me as a content creator to hear someone just say 2.0 is terrible now and not know why because I'd like to know why because then I can look and see if you're right and point that out for other people right and maybe for the creators who can update something to make it back to more like what you liked right keep that in mind okay um I try to be a voice for the community voice of the rings and that's not just for voice rise to war obviously I do lots on my channel but um I, I am a voice that I can help with that so and I I try to be a very reasonable voice, very middle ground. What are things I like? What are things I don't like? I try not to be a big hater or lover of something right off the bat. I like to check it out. I've played down an entire season of 2.0. I at first I was a little the feelings of grump, like I didn't want this change. And now that I've played it, I'm like, well, I like the formation system. I do enjoy that. Um, but there's stuff within the formation system that I still think needs tuning and work. Um, and there's some weird connection between units and commanders that me and Jethros also can't quite figure out that me and him were talking about the other day. Um, do commanders do a little less damage if their units get wiped out sooner? Or do they do pretty consistent damage? Still, we'll find out as we learn more. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you to my wonderful patrons for their support. Let's see here. Oh, there they are. Wait, oh, oh, whoa. Oh. Sorry, I'm clicking the wrong thing here. Um, oh, and that, that is an old uh, Patreon card. I, oh, my, my apologies. Uh, where, where is it? Here, uh...
All right, my friends. Anyway, you guys have a great and wonderful day in Middle Earth. That was the right Patreon card. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you to my wonderful subscribers and Patreons again. Subscribe button's there. Next episode's over there. There's an update of my server. And I will see you guys all in the next episodes of Voice of the Rings. See ya. <laughs> yes, we'll have some fun in the future, my friends. And uh, enjoy.